Good morning, grandchildren. It is currently 1140, October 21st, 2015. Uh, it's a Wednesday, not a Monday or a Thursday. I've been really, really busy, and I'm going to explain that to you in a minute, along with a ton of other really exciting news. But uh, first thing is first, the date. Today is October 21st, 2015, which is a very important day, to me at least, because that is the day that an old movie series called Back to the Future went to when they went to the future from 1985. I don't know if this is completely accurate, but I'm pretty sure the second movie was made in like 1988 or 1989. Uh, but in that movie, they went to the future and uh, they made a ton of like kind of far out predictions about what was gonna happen. And uh, the day that they went to was today. Uh, and it's nothing like it was in the movie. I love those movies dearly. It was one of the main trilogies that I watched as a little kid. Uh, and they're all perfect, except the third one's kind of sad and gimpy um, parts. But uh, as a whole, the series is very good. The thing that's really crazy about it to me is that back in the, the 80s, that's what they were predicting the future would be like. Uh, they, they thought that we would have at least close to all these like technological advancements. I mean, the movie the series, they, they were comedy movies, but uh, I feel like they weren't trying to be unrealistic. So they were making all these predictions about types of technology that like, of course we'd have that by 2015, back in the 80s. And uh, every day before now, it's been like, okay, that's in the future still. Like I, I could have watched that five years ago and still thought, okay, that just takes place in the future from now. But Today is the last day that that future is in the future. After today, when I watch those movies and watch the future, I'm actually watching the past. And I know it's probably not that big of a deal to you guys because if you guys have even seen the movies, all of it was in the past, including the future, and that makes a lot of sense because that's like 50 or 60 years down the line when you guys are gonna be alive. But, for me, this is like an, an existential issue that I'm having trouble with, that this thing that I always looked to for the future was, it's now gonna be in the past. On top of that, they, they predicted a lot of stuff really terribly. They, they had like, hide, you hydrated a pizza from like a little mini thing and then it grew into a giant pizza, pizza which was ridiculous. Uh, uh, they had like, holograms, which we still have a terrible time trying to figure out in science. Everyone wore these out there bizarre clothes. I mean, oh, it looks like an 80s movie example of what the future is going to be like. That's exactly what it looks like. But look at me. I'm wearing uh, a flannel, which is like cowboys or something. Some kind of old clothing. A regular plain red t-shirt and jeans. That's it. There's nothing special about my clothing. It's all stuff that we've had for years since before the 80s. I know fashion changes, but I don't think it's it's that ridiculous. Okay, well, I mean, the, the 80s and the 90s were kind of ridiculous in the, the clothing that they wore. But I think the important thing that you can learn from that is that I don't think that time changes things as much as people always think. There's actually this saying that I don't remember exactly at the moment that was, that's a... Uh, the, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Uh, and it's pretty much the idea that it doesn't matter how much time passes, people as a whole are going to remain the way that they are for the most part. There's quotes from like, I think it was like Aristotle or something, where he was talking about how the, the new generation of young people was gonna destroy the world because they're so reckless and crazy and they party and all that stuff. And that's exactly what you hear from old people right now. And uh, like, there's always this like misconception that uh, this generation is so like sexual and vile and everything, but uh, you can ask like, I mean, okay, different people can have different views on it, but I've asked old people and there's old people that say, yeah, yeah I mean, in the, in the 50s and 60s, kids were also really, really sexual and they were pr pregnant teenagers and stuff. Same thing in like the 30s and stuff. It just wasn't as uh, well known and widely spread when it happened because 
the internet wasn't a thing and it couldn't spread that easily and people wanted to keep it a secret and they could. This day and age, we just know about it a little bit more uh, because you could talk to each other from across the world and things spread quicker than at any other point in time. But I think people are pretty much the same. And I think I want to make a, I want to try to make a promise that uh, if I actually succeed at making movies and I make a movie that takes place in the future, I want to try to make it as realistic future as possible. I don't want it to be one of those way out there, uh, everyone's dressed crazy, uh, technology it has things that aren't even scientifically possible, like, like stuff like that. I want it to be as best of an accurate depiction of what I think the future could be like, having that in mind, that things pretty much stay the same. And if you ever see a movie that I make about the future that I wrote, obviously, like I mean, if I don't write the movie, then I, I don't know if there's how much I can do about it, but if you see a movie that I wrote and I made one day, and it has a f depiction of the future that is absolutely ridiculous in the same way that Back to the Future 2 was and how it predicted the future, I want you to punch me in the face. I think that's four. We've just hit four punches in the face. Statistically, one of these is probably going to be, I'm, I'm gonna get punched in the face. So, so today's Back to the Future day, woohoo! But I don't, I don't know if I have time to actually watch Back to the Future even though I really want to because I have a lot of stuff going on and that's what I wanted to tell you about is that I have a lot going on and it's really, really exciting. I don't remember if I told you guys in another video that I was applying for a job at KRCR, which is a local news station. Uh, uh but I did. I found an on Craigslist and then I made this ad for myself and I showed it to them and they uh, interviewed me and then they gave me a test to do and then they narrowed it down at this job to me and some other guy and they said that he had more experience but I had more enthusiasm and then they wanted to give me one last test and they gave us both a test where we had to write a script for a charity thing that happens every Christmas and they wanted us to make it something new and different so I wrote up a script and I didn't even do it on time I did it that the, the night before because I I procrastinate and that's an issue with me but I wrote a bunch of scripts and I sent them in the next day and then they called me that night and said that I got the job and then I went in yesterday and there was a webinar which I'd never experienced before which is kind of like a seminar but it goes over the internet and uh, I sat there in this conference room for two hours watching these people from across the the country talk about news broadcasting and stuff and uh, they were talking to me and I'm officially I filled out a bunch of papers and I am now the promotions producer for KRCR news uh, in Redding, California. The title sounds way more important than it actually, uh, it, well, okay, well, it's not, it's not not important, but it makes me sound like a bigger deal than I am. I'm just a guy who writes and makes ads that go on the channel, uh, for that channel. So I, I'm the one who has to write and film the things that, uh, say like, oh, we get you the important news first. We, we tell you when severe weather things happen. I have to be the one who makes those 15 or 30 second spots that go on TV in the uh, the entire county. I think it's actually a couple counties in Northern California. So it's a lot of Northern California that I'll be making these ads for. But uh, yeah, now I have the job and it's crazy. Um, no. Oh. I feel like I'm probably in over my head, but I think that's the best way to, to learn how to do things. So I'm going to be learning as much as I can about stuff I don't know, about news and editing and stuff, uh, so I can do the job to the same uh, ability level that they think I have the ability to do. I, I, and I actually go in for the first time officially today. I have to bring in my social security card and uh, a couple other stuff so they can confirm payroll things, but I think... I'm not entirely sure, but I think today is my official first work day at KRCR. So that's terribly exciting, and as I'm telling you that, I realized that I think I left uh, the employee manual in my car, and I have to read that before I go to work. I am excited. Uh, I, I'm, I'm still working at the movie theater, like I, I have been for over a year. Uh, this is just a part-time job. I've been kind of looking for more money for film equipment and stuff to, to work on my projects. So now I'm pretty much working two jobs, and I'm actually kind of terrified of that because this new job is going to have 20 to 30 hours a week, and my old job probably had, um, and it depends on the week, but 15 to 25 or maybe 30 a week, depending on what time of the year it is. So there's a potential that at its worst, I could be working like, oh no, like 60 hours a week, which is, 
Uh, that's probably gonna be too much work. I'm not gonna have time to do anything else. I mean, just applying for the job and having work at the theater, I didn't have time to make a Song Saturday thing or do a Monday video, and that's why I'm doing one late. But if I have to work 60 hours a week, one, I'll be making pretty good money, I guess. Uh, like, so that's exciting, even though it's all, like, close to minimum wage. Uh, I will... I'll have money after I get through it, I guess. I'll just put it all in, like, savings or whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna be really difficult, and I really don't want to ask the theater to make me work less, but I might have to at some point if it becomes too much. I really like working at the theater, but it's not what I love doing, uh, because I don't like doing the things that I have to do at the theater, but I like the people there in the atmosphere, and I like being around all those movies. But this now is a job where I get to do something that I really, really enjoy. I get to write and edit uh, on a daily basis, which is actually really exciting, and uh, I think that's more important than working at the movie theater, so I might have to ask to work less. And anyway, in other news, it was a short film that I wrote, and I think I talked about it in another video, and I probably put the script up for you guys to see if you wanted to. Uh, but I was having a lot of trouble finding a little girl to to act as my younger sister in the, the short film, because I can't just put an ad on Craigslist asking if there's a little girl that I can film, because that's how you get arrested. But I, I complained to one of my friends who said that they knew somebody who, who knew somebody whose sister was in this thing called Cascade Christmas every year, which is a really big deal in the Reading area. Uh, it's like a Christmas show that goes on, and she said that this little girl was in uh, that as a little girl in Cascade Christmas. So I'm like, okay, she probably looks young if she was playing a little girl, uh, and apparently she was a good enough actor to be in Cascade Christmas. So uh, they, my friend talked to that person who talked to that person who got me her number, and then I texted her and got in contact with her parents and I went over and we had an audition for uh, the short film and it went really really well. I was actually really impressed. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be just because of the age and I feel like there's a lot of kids who are into acting but aren't that good at that age. I don't even think I'm good at acting yet and I'm an adult uh, and I've been doing it for a really long time. Uh, but this little girl was actually really really good and she was the only girl I could find so I got really lucky with that and then I contacted some other people that my friend recommended for these other parts of the two farmers in that script and I think I have uh, once I audition them, as long as they're good, which my friend, I, I trust him so I feel like they should be pretty good, uh, as long as everything works out with that, I have all of the actors that I need for this short film that I thought I was not going to be able to do because I couldn't find enough actors. But now I found them, uh, and I'm going to try to pay them, I think, $10 an hour, which is actually more than I make at the moment. So I, I don't know, I'll be, I'll be paying them, but it's, that's weird to think about that I'm paying these people for more than I work for, so I'll be, but it's multiple people. So I'm every like hour of work that I do with the the theater or at KRC or whatever is going to be like divvied up amongst other people who I'm going to be paying more. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's it's weird. But uh, now I just have to find a location and I already have some spots, so I need to go talk to some uh, property owners to see if they let me um, film on their property. And if not, I need to try to bribe them, which. I don't know how to do. I'll, I'll figure it out. Anyway, that's an update. Uh, that's why I missed the last couple of videos. Uh, I, I'm still going to keep to my promise that I will make at least one video a week. No matter what. Even if it's terrible. I might have a couple videos in the near future just because of the two job things that are just filmed on my phone. Like handheld or whatever and aren't edited that well. Not that these are edited really well. But it'll be worse than it is right now. Um... Uh, but yeah, they, they might go down in quality a little bit, but I will make a journal entry at least once a week. Uh, that's what my promise is to you guys. So yeah, I'll keep you updated. Um, I have to go read an employee manual that I talked about half an hour ago. So um, if you guys see me in the near future, we should... Uh, oh, good. I, if, if I'm going to do this every single video... I'm gonna have to start getting really creative because this is getting really difficult to come up with ideas because I keep thinking of an idea and then I remember that I already did that in another entry and I'm like, no, no, I can't, I can't do that because I already said it and we can't do the same thing twice. So anyway, uh, if you see me anytime in the near future, we should, uh, 
watch the news? Yeah, we should watch the news. And I'll complain about how it's not as good as it was when I helped make the stuff that was for the news. I'll see you guys next time.